blueberry, our violet Taraco. And you can see blueberry. Come on up here, up here. Is very hungry. Here, get it. Good morning, friends. You're watching Daybird Aviaries. This is a Friday feeding video, or a Feed My Pet Friday. Since I don't have any more baby birds to feed right now, I decided I would show you what I feed my Taracos. Now, Taracos, they're a, a weird bird that comes from Africa. They're sort of like a toucan. They're sort of like a pigeon. They're kind of like a pheasant. They're, they're just weird little birds. They're amazing. They're active. They are friendly. They are vocal and interactive. Now they don't speak human words, but they, they do vocalize. But one of the most interesting attributes about them is that they are fruit eaters. They eat fruits and vegetables. And so we give them a wide assortment, the biggest, widest assortment that we possibly can give them. Now living here in rural central Alabama, we don't have, you know, we don't have a Whole Foods nearby. So there's not a lot that we can get that is out of the ordinary. So we rely heavily on frozen blueberries and cantaloupes and grapes and apples and things like that. Today I found a, a mango. And the kids and I ate quite a bit of it, but I saved some back so that the Taracos could have some. Now these peelings, uh, I'll probably, I'll probably give those to the uh, Patagonian Cavey. He would like those. This pit, I'm going to give to uh, some of the lorries and let them eat the rest of that off. But I've diced up quite a bit of the mango that I'm going to give to the Taracos. I'm going to sprinkle that <coughs> on top of their food bowls once I get that, that done. <coughs> um, sorry about that. My, 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 uh, our little dog, Buster, is having an issue. I'm going to start by chopping up a, a yellow squash. Now this doesn't have to be cooked for them to digest it. They will eat it just fine. I'm going to take those little ends off. I don't know why. I just, you know, I do that for for myself. Now, this is something that came out of the garden. This is a crookneck yellow summer squash. And I'm just going to cut it up into small little bits. You want something less than half an inch in size um, cubed up for them. Um, anything that you commonly would eat as far as fruits and vegetables go, they can have, at least in moderation, other than avocados. Avocado is really the only thing that uh, you would likely get a hold of that is going to cause them any kind of trouble. There is something about an avocado that is poisonous to birds, and so we don't feed avocado to any of our birds. And so we give them what we can get a hold of easily. Um, you know, when I can find a, a mango or a papaya, I'm going to buy it. And, you know, the kids are going to want some, and I'm going to give the rest to the birds. And that's just the way we do things here. So if you're going to feed something hard, like a carrot or a sweet potato, or a winter squash, you know, something like a, a butternut squash or an acorn squash or even a, a pumpkin. You're going to want to cook those kinds of things, uh, soften up the carrots and, and that sort of thing. But any of the fruits that you're likely to find will be good for them. Again, the bigger the variety that you can get, the better it will be for them. I'm going to go ahead and cut all this up. I may not give every single bit of this to the Taraco once I get out to the aviary. I may scoop some of this out. I'm essentially making a chop. You know, parrot people call chopped up fruits and vegetables chop. I'm just dicing this into like quarter inch pieces. It could be a little bit larger for them, but the smaller pieces are easier for them to swallow. 
So I'm just going to get this done. Uh, here we go. I've got the yellow squash cut up. And that's a lot of yellow squash. But that's okay. That is good for them. Things with the, the, the more colors, the better. So things like an apple, that's going to provide a lot of sugar to them. But it's not going to provide a lot of other vitamins to them. That is a plum. It's not. I bought this from the grocery store. It's supposed to be an organic plum. It is not quite ripe. But I'm going to go ahead and cut the seed out, the pit out of this plum. And I'm going to cut it up for them. You know, they have a Walmart here. Walmart, they carry things seasonally that's available. That's why I rely on frozen blueberries a lot. They, they tend to keep that in stock here. And so when I can get other things besides blueberries, I definitely do that. Just to provide the variety that they need. In the wild, in Africa, um, they're called a go-away bird. And I think that's really, really funny. But they would raid fruit crops in agricultural areas of Africa. And so, obviously, if you spent a lot of time, just like, just like we would not want a wild crow here digging up and eating our newly emerged sweet corn plants, neither do the farmers in Africa want a, a violet taraco to come and eat their crop. And so I can't hold it against those folks. But they call them a go-away bird. I think that's funny. You know, speaking of crows, crows make absolutely wonderful pets, but they're against the law to keep. I can kill them if I deem them to be a pest. I just can't keep one as a pet. I think that's ridiculous. Anyhow, I'm going to half these grapes just to make it just a bit easier for them to swallow. I'm going to put some here, some over there. Let's cut up just a few more of these green grapes. I have some red grapes also. I'm going to get some of these. Again, that one's small enough. I can just put it in color. That'll be a nice treat for them, don't you think? Um, these must be a little bit fresher than the green grapes. They don't want to turn loose of their little stalk as easily. Uh-oh. You're not getting away that easily. Get back in there. Let's get these cut up. And then a surprising ingredient that I try to give to them just as often as possible is salad greens chopped up. They, they really seem to like just the green leafy vegetables. Sometimes I'll give them some steamed broccoli. Um, broccoli is uh, in high demand by our children. They love this stuff. So there's not really a, a lot of broccoli left around here. But sometimes I'll give them some steamed broccoli. I'll, I'll sneak some past the kids. Kids like to dip raw broccoli in yellow mustard and eat it that way. I think that's always the thought that was weird of them, but I guess that's the Romanian coming out of them. Romanians, in general, they tend to eat a lot of mustard. I think that's a German influence on the Romanian culture. You know, here we have tomatoes and we eat lots of ketchup. They don't t that's the uh, pit out of that plum. Not going to... A word of caution about that, don't give pits from plums and peaches and apricots and nectarines to your parrots. If they were to eat one or two, it probably would not be so bad. But it's said that the pits do contain arsenic and arsenic will build up in the body. The flesh, the fruit, is perfectly fine. But the inside the pit uh, is not to be eaten same with apple seeds, they're, they're not supposed to be eaten. And these are seedless grapes, if anybody has a concern about that, um, don't be too concerned. I'm just going to chop up a small bit of this. Any green leafy vegetable that you eat 
is going to be okay in moderation. Um, things like iceberg lettuce are not going to have a lot of nutritional value. They do provide quite a bit of water to the bird, to the animal, so those are perfectly safe to give. Just don't let your bird fill up on something that's not going to provide any nutrients. So very, very small amounts of iceberg lettuce or even cucumber for that matter. Cucumbers have a, um, my dietitian that I see for the, my diabetes problem says that cucumbers have a negative calorie count that it takes more energy to digest a cucumber than what the cucumber provides to your body. And so there's not much sense in giving that to your bird, is there? So I'm gonna half up this mango and give some to each bowl here. Let's just see if we can mix that up a bit. See what that looks like. Can you see that? That looks pretty, doesn't it? Good enough to eat. Huh. Um, another word of caution about the green foods is you don't want to give a lot of spinach or beet greens. Um, things that are going to have high levels of uh, oxalates in them, those will bind calcium from the bird's gut and you don't want that at all. You don't want to give them any um, thing that contains iron in it. So, very few of the red grapes. I do not give them red grapes every day. Uh, I wouldn't give them dried raisins at all. Green grapes are going to be okay. A few red grapes, you know, a couple times a month is perfectly fine. Again, I'm just using what I was able to get from the grocery store today so that I can vary their diet so it's not just cantaloupe and... Um, green leaf lettuce and frozen blueberries and you don't want to give them things with oxalates in it like too much spinach or too much swiss chard or too much beet greens because those things uh, will bind calcium uh, especially for a female bird that you're trying to breed from that's laying eggs that's going to be a huge uh, no-no to give to her Never give the Taracos dog food or anything that is going to contain um, iron, so no meat at all. I know that some people used to give their soft-billed birds dog food, and that's not something that you would really want to do. So we feed the uh, Missouri Bow Iron soft bill pellets, and so they keep a, a bowl of dry pellets in their cage at all times. Uh, as do our lorries. We, we give the same pellets to our lorry keys. Um, but you don't want to uh, give them anything that's going to hurt them or endanger them. So no avocados, no cucumbers, not too much, uh, not too much cucumber, not too much iceberg lettuce. Other, other lettuces and greens are okay. Only give spinach in moderation. Only give red grapes in moderation. Other than that, mangoes, papayas, pears, uh, apples, those are all okay. The bigger the variety, the better. So let's go ahead and feed the bird. This is Blueberry, our violet Taraco. And you can see Blueberry, come on up here, up here, is very hungry. Here, get it. Here, I got a bowl for you. Here, come on. Come on, baby. Here. Here. Oh, that won't fit in there. The bowl's too big. Here, I got it. I, I know what to do. Now, he has his bowl of pellets. He is not starving as he would make you believe. Here. There you go, son. I'm going to take this one out from... There we go. Now, he doesn't know... He's not able to drink from this nipple waterer. So, he has a big bowl of water down low. 
What do you think about that, baby? Sorry about all the noise. Y'all know it's noisy in the birdhouse to begin with. But, um, Hurricane Ida is here today, and she's dumping quite a bit of rain on us. Go, baby, go! Is that good? Is that good stuff? I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. The bird running frantically in the background is in a different room um, of the aviary. That is a chicken, the guinea that grew up in the house. He and Blueberry grew up together, but Blueberry no longer likes his company. But he still wants to be with Blueberry. It's very, very unfortunate. Our uh, dirt floor in here is very muddy today. I've got to, some drainage issues to take care of, obviously. There we go, Blueberry. Say bye to our friends. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Pete. Tell him to subscribe. He's gone. Bye bye. I don't know what that thing is, but it's about six inches long. Get you some water, baby. Smile. Thanks for having me.